when you're fishing this short guys you really don't need to put much tension in, in your tip if not any just leave you can either leave it slack or just have it literally tightened up a minute amount and when I mean a minute amount I mean literally a, a couple of millimeters as you saw I've just flicked it out over there and tapping the line here we go guys see line bites you've got to be ready for those it's something spooky as you can see that one's hit the line and spooked straight out of the peg as I say I'll give it another probably a couple of minutes and then I'll be back out again because if it's disturbed that feeder and yanked it it's probably dispersed the bait all over the place and that trap that you set with your method feeder and your little cherry on top like a bait well tart your wafter if that's thrown away from the feeder and all the feed's gone all over the place it's still getting liners guys big heavy liners hence why i'm fishing with a completely slack tip because otherwise it'll just be even worse and i'm really low to the water as well so but i say i'm going to give it another probably 90 seconds and then really in and flick another one out over the top and that's just one it helps build the swim up and two you're resetting that parcel that little package of bait for that one fish to come along suck up and and off I say on the small guru method that I've got I've chose the longest stem and I've also got a little bit of twisted line at the back of it just to try and nail as much of close to the feeder down as possible but end of the day line going through the water fish swim into it there's not a lot you can do about it there's a lot of fish activity guys you probably won't pick it up on the camera all up in the water so all right let's reset the trap guys you can see there I'm not fishing out far at all so again two mil pellets in first squeeze them down not mega hard get that hook embedded in the top like that I don't know if you'll see that I'll show you up close later with the wafter and then a little pile over the top and then just squeeze it and just tidy them edges up it's a little underarm chuck perfectly out in front get down on the tip and as I say leave that tick sorry leave that tip really slack guys you know what I mean literally so it's straight as a dot there you go guys fish on I think it's another bream no yeah it is a bream this one happy days well, the carp aren't playing ball at the moment, but I've had a skimmer and a, a bream now. Lovely. There we go. There you go, guys. One bream. Definitely got quite a bit of bubbles out there now, guys. So it's, it's either bream or we're getting a mixture of fish rooting around for the uh, the method now. So we're just keep going to keep plugging away, see what, see what happens. <clears throat> Here we go, guys. Proper bite that one. see how many fish it's spooked on the surface there so many fish in the swim it's just trying to get the carp to get their heads down and have a munch on the deck little nine foot engage by guru giving it a little workout so i say four or five casts that come quick, pretty quick. So, not quite ready, as I said. Don't rush them. 
It's still got plenty of power, especially with the temperatures still up where they are. They're, not, they're nowhere near gone to sleep yet by a long way. It's a nice common. It's ready to wake up now. Fish in this lake free, they do go bananas, guys. I just get that rod low, getting back under control. I'm trying to get in this bank of reeds down here. Managed to get him out of that. Get him to take a gasp of air. There he is. And the old queuing one in the bottom of the mouth. Happy days. Carp number one, guys. He's in the bag. So, because his platform's right, you've got to lift by the actual net itself, right in the bottom lip. Lovely. Get that out of the way. I don't know if we'll be able to hold him up, guys. He's quite a sprightly fish. So, we'll see. Here we go guys, happy days. Here we go guys. What a savage bite that was. <laughs> Definitely a carp this one guys. Absolutely slammed it round. I hope you can see that, you saw that on the, uh, it's a nice mirror carp as well guys. Don't think it knows it's hooked yet. Just let it have a little play out there for a minute. There are a few feeding fish down there now, which is good. Just shows you what exciting sport this can be, guys. Just literally meters from your own bank. There you go guys, nice little mirror. <sighs> Carp number two in the bag guys. <laughs> Happy days guys, look at that. Happy days guys. <laughs> Short method, get in. Just gonna try the red krill this time, just to see if anything different happens. Does it still bring me a carp? Does it bring me a bream? Does it not get me a bite, this chuck? Just like playing around. Still got fish out there, there's plenty. You can see it's nice and cloudy and there's still bubbles coming up which is always a thing you've got to look for when you've got fish feeding on the deck especially the bream they will always blow bubbles like there's no tomorrow when it's a silty bottom so let's just get this right that's it so again little underarm flick guys straight back on the spot get your line sunk keep that tip nice and slack Get that ring up against, tight up against the feeder rest, so it can't be pulled in. And then hopefully, we'll uh, it will fly around again in just a few mementos. 
in like we did with that one. Just gonna, only four or five. Just six mils over the top. Just giving them something else to grub around for. Keep them in the area. A few down the edge. Honestly guys, when this gets going, it can be deadly. This You can build up a real weight. And if you're on venues with real big fish, and if you are worried about a pole, if you spent a lot of money on it, you're just a bit nervous about playing these big fish, this is another way of catching them, guys. And you've got the benefit of being able to let them run and then gain control using the rod. But it really is great fun, guys. <laughs> when they're on it, it is just brilliant. Right at them, when, it, when, it's, when, it, when they want it, it will smash it round, don't you worry. Here we go, guys. It's a bream this time. Could feel the difference straight away. Here we go, little skimmer. But it's good, you're putting fish in the net. And that's what it's all about. Yes, ideally we'd like the carp, but just showing as well with these wafters and these pellets with the cell syrup on them, they will give you a variety of species. It's not just for carp, guys. Bottom lip again, put him back. That was what the red one bought. I want to have another chuck on the red. See for that little flick cast, in it goes. And as you can see, guys, anything heavier than the 24 gram, you could even probably drop to an 18 to be fair. I think it will cause too much commotion, but at the moment, that initial plop, if anything, it's bringing fish around to this area. Indication straight away, guys. So we've still got fish in the swim. Five or six of those six mils over the same spot that you're dropping the feeder in. Just a couple of a couple down your edge line. If you've got your pole and your pleasure fishing, you can obviously cut some pellet in down there as well, or ground bait, whatever you're comfortable with. We go, guys. In again. Go, okay, guys. Tighten that drag up a little bit. Feels like a carp, this one again. It's not quite woke up yet. But wow, guys, how good, can, how good is this? Yeah, it's a lovely common, big chunky common. Nine foot little rod, small method feeder, two mils, mainline wafters, <laughs> and a whole load of fun. Fish is wanting to go where I don't want him to go at this moment in stage. Just get him out of the way. Got a nice pair of shoulders on him, this one. And he's in. And that's the benefit with the rod guys as well. I think sometimes they feel that elastic and they just want to rip and rip and rip and rip. So if you're worried, yep, another good fish. Look at that, that's double figure fish this time, guys. Absolute unit of a carp. Short method of fishing, guys. Happy days. Right, guys, so that was a chunk on the red krill. <laughs> Eight mil wafter. Let's see if we can get another one. Just get that feeder loaded up, guys. Like I said, get them two mils in the bed of the feeder. Get your wafter and your QM1 tucked in nicely. Can you see that, guys? Lovely. And then a little sprinkle over the top, a little compressed with this back part of your thumb, a little bit of tidying up, and then you're ready to go, guys. So, a little side underarm flick again, get it in the same spot. Back out she goes. And let's see what this one brings. And get that tip down, like I said, down there for that ring, get it set. Hopefully, we'll have another one in a sec, guys. Again, like I said, five or six, six mils. Over the same spot where you're fishing, your method. Don't have to be on a dinner plate, guys. You're trying to build up a little area, just get them fish grazing and get them confident. You can see down there that tip's really nice and slack. If you want to, you can tighten it up a little bit just to bring that line. But see what as soon as I tightened it, then guys, did you see that? 
line bite straight away because I'm bringing that line up in the water rather than it laying flat like this, the line going down and then on the deck, you're carrying that line higher up in the water all the way down. So it's going at an angle all the way down. So there's more chance of fish at different levels that are coming through to catch it. So it is hard, very hard to not get any sort of line bites when you feed a fishing, but if you can limit it, then there's less chance of the feeder being pulled around and also fish spooking out of the peg. Indication straight away, we've still got bubbles coming up, so we've still got fish feeding on the deck. So we've had a bream, a couple of skimmers and a couple of carp in a space of about eight casts, so happy days. Here we go guys, we're in again. This one's a runner. You can see the amount of fish it's disturbing out there. But how good is this guys? How much fun? <laughs> Again, like we do with a lot of our rod fishing, keep the tip nice and low. Gently work the fish back towards you. You don't have to pull the heads off. Don't be up here with it. Just keep it down. It can be as close to the water as you want, but I find it like just about that sort of angle. It's nice to see that fish has come straight in like that. But he's coming quick, so he's, he's not probably going to be worn out yet. So just be, just be wary of that. You don't want them going under your platform and that, trust me, that is where they're going to go. But yeah, it's taken a few chucks, guys, but as you see, even around midday, them fish are willing to come in close and feed on those pellets. You don't have to be going out all this, all further out just a few meters out another lovely cracking common these fish are absolutely mint in here at the moment guys on lake three at monks but look at that rod what a great bit of kit nine foot you can get these for just over 100 pound i think 120 pound now but what a tool and trust me guys also in the winter for light bomb fishing on a venue like this, perfect, absolutely perfect. See, as I showed, I've got managed to get that fish in, but he's he's not done yet. That's it, lead him to the net. But if he does that, just pull the net away because you don't need to feed a catching on the net and then jolting the hook out of its mouth. Poor netting Gary. Said he was a feisty one. Beautiful, beautiful colours though. guys in the bag in the bag grab the spreader block guys because I'm off the floor a bit here last thing I'm gonna do is be snapping your landing nets and get that fish in perfectly hooked in the bottom lip again then if you'll see that there guys I'll show you down there right in the bottom that queuing one is there, happy days. Let's get it out of his mouth. If he's gonna let us. <laughs> so these fish are gonna be sprightly still. With these temperatures, they're not gonna be lethargic in any way, short or form. And that is a, a, a cracker. Another monk's common carp. Happy days. <laughs> Let's get him back. Literally what we're doing, say probably about, I'd say this many pellets, guys. And you can see what it looks like. And then we've got the 
little yellow wafter sitting in amongst it like that there and this that's your cherry on your cake and it comes down they suck all that up with the wafter and in it, in it goes and the same you can see the difference this gives the contrast with the krill red look how that's that now that is a cherry bait well guys look how that stands out proper stands out and i just think when it's that murkier water real dark water that that red that just gives it a darker silhouette and they just pick that out sometimes let's get in this put a few in pellets and six mils like i said these are the mainline cell six mils so matching the, matching the other baits i'm using just get them out make a little bit of noise again and then passing fish just make them interested hopefully they'll follow them down like i said you don't want to be constantly constantly throwing them in because that's only going to draw them fish up and want to, and then want them to stay up perfect if you're catching you want to catch them shallow on a, on a like foot deep rig two foot deep rig absolutely perfect for that that's, that's what you want to be doing and then slapping your rigging on the pole but today we're just doing this little short method exercise just to show you guys it's not all about chucking right out there to islands or other side of the lake or 20 plus meters these fish are willing to feed in close on the method let's get that yellow essential cell eight mil on here we go guys that's the essential cell it's got like a little speckling to it as well again load it all up and then she's ready for launch grab your feeder just put a bit of tension on the rod guys and then flick and that's it and slow it down by touching the line on the reel if you're worried about it going too far and then get it down on the water and leave that tip nice and slack So now we're fishing with the yellow, guys, and the two mils. And again, it's the, it's the essential cell liquid that I've currently got on the two mils I've put on, the sticky syrup. There we go, guys. Bang. Hope you saw that. Loads of fizzing out there, so it's quite a silty bottom. So sometimes you might have to move to the left or right or just change where you are because they will dig that silt out. This one doesn't want to be uh, on camera. <laughs> Again, that one was two and a half minutes, that one. That bite. Making a run to me right now. Keep that tension on when he gets, that's it. Holding the bottom. This fish does not want to show its face, as I said. Does not want to be on camera at all. It was like another good carp though. Go. Just let him go. Don't argue with him. <laughs> Another mirror. Another chunky, chunky mirror. In she goes. He goes. <laughs> That's another another clonker. 
don't know if you see that again guys but perfectly in the bottom lip again there let's get him unhooked days guys another double figure fish on the short method feeder happy days right guys so we've had several nice big carp proving how good the short method feeder is but i can't resist a little go down the edge before i pack my gear up and get home so here we go guys let's give it a crack and let's see if we can yank another large one out still keep feeding the swim out in front of you just in case this doesn't work you've got something to fall back on especially if you're in a match scenario the last thing you want to do is let let it die Here we go guys, fish on. Just like that guys. <laughs> First one from the edge. On the, using the method feeder. Looks like a nice fish as well. So because you've got, a, it doesn't know it's been hooked, I don't think too much at the moment. It's because you just hooked a fish down there. Just get a few pellets back in there. Just to, because you have, it will spook them. go guys just like that now i think if i'd hooked that on a pole it would have gone absolutely nuts it's not to say this fish isn't going to go nuts when i get him out of the water <sighs> another lovely fish another monk lakes comment first one down the edge happy days <laughs> Right guys, so that's the end of the session. As I said at the beginning, it's only a couple of hours I was coming down here for, just to show you how valuable fishing the method short and down the edge can be. So I've not had loads of fish today, but I've only been here a couple of hours. Um, been a bit iffy with, to get it going, but I've had a few out, which is the main thing. But trust me guys, when you get this on the right day, when they're really hungry hippos, you will bag up loads using this method. For anyone that wants to know the rig details and rig mechanics, Main line is Guru 8 pound pulse. I have a Guru hybrid feeder, that's the, that's the size 24. And then I've got a, three, a four inch hook length and that is 019 engage. And that is down to a QM1 size 12. And that little bad boy, which has brought the fish, the eight mil krill main line wafter. Great bait, great gear. And this rod as you'll see in the video, wow guys, Seriously, if you haven't got something like this in your armory, check it out. For the money, just over £100, it is pencil thin, but the power it's got, and it will subdue them bigger fish. Um, and, and quite happily, balanced with a 4,000 reel, didn't, it doesn't give it any, doesn't feel horrible in the hands. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit me up in the comments, and all them people that are coming new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, guy. guys, it really keeps me going. Thank you so much to everyone. Take care, tight lines. So guys, bait wise for this short method session today, I have been using cell two mil pellets, but also glugged up and just to make them even more stickier with the essential cell mainline liquid syrup, sticky syrup. Absolutely blinding this stuff. Great, I've used it for down the edge as well. Um, hook bait wise, I tried the yellow essential cell in an eight mil, had a couple of fish, but mainly the bream wanted those. But when I did put the red finally got the fish to feed down on the deck instead of up in the water where they wanted to be today. The red krill eight mil, wow, what a difference. They love these, absolutely love these. So these will definitely be coming back out in my tackle bag and having another run out on the bank. Any other questions guys about the baits, the rigs, anything, just hit me up in the comments. Thanks guys.